So it's the end of the two-year lease and on a very rainy day I say goodbye to our friend for the past two years, the Kia e-Nero, which has been a fantastic car. And yes, it's suitably rainy today. So end of the lease, I just had to hand back the keys and uh, then that's it. Um, and they didn't even bother looking at it, but uh, I'm sure I'll find out if they don't like something. But uh, yeah, really sad, really sad. And now I walk back to the car that we've got for a month, which is just there, the DS3 Crossback e tents So uh, we'll see how that is. I'm very sad. So it's the last family journey in the e Nero because the e Nero goes back tomorrow. And how are we all feeling? Sad. How are you feeling, Piccola? Sad. Sad. Bye bye, Nero. You were a great car and uh, very big and comfortable and beautiful inside and out. It looks like baby's talking. Because she's blocking your face. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect it is a perfect car, I think, for us. Um, it's a perfect size for the city even. Even if you know, if you're gonna if you want a big family car, relatively big family car, it's a, it's quite easy to maneuver into parking spaces and things. But it's not too big, it's not like a massive tank or anything. It's not a Chelsea tractor, as they call the sort of Land Rovers and things. Um, so yeah, it was perfect. Really, really good range. That was never an issue, was it? Yeah. And um, it's a fantastic car. Yeah. And I, f I even th though. Yes. There are a few things that bother me. So what things haven't you liked about the Nero? Allora. I haven't liked that uh, lane thing that uh, does beep 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 whenever you get uh, near a line. Uh, eh. If I'm driving on a country road when there's such small space, that doesn't count anyway. That's just on the highway. Allora, don't make it default. Because I even contacted Kia and I said, the guy was useless by the way, the contact on Twitter. And I said, can I remove that lane assist by default? And, uh, and he says, no. Also, I've tried and... Also, yes, I had asked him a few other things. Uh, and he said, no, no, you can't do that, you can't do that. But then I did it myself, so he didn't know anything. That was a while ago, though, and they're better. They're much better now, I think. Uh, but bet. They yeah. didn't know anything. I but, did it um, myself. He was dismissive on Twitter. I think I don't like him. <laughs> Then, but yeah, so for anyone that doesn't realise what it is, lane keep assist is supposed to keep you in your lane, which is all very well when you're, when you're on the motorway or if you're on a, a normal road with two lanes, and then it works okay. But otherwise, if you're on a country road that doesn't have the middle line, then it's absolutely useless, and it just goes beep 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 all the time. So yeah, so that is right. I mean, that's one of the, that's that's on my list. I've got a list here, you see, and that's on my list as well. Yes, so it shouldn't be default because every time I turn it on, I have to remember to turn that off, you know? Yeah, I know, it should be a default, I don't know why. I mean, it's a, they, they must think it's a safety thing, so. Mm, I don't like it. Then, then the locking mechanism. I still don't understand how it works. So when I stop the car and I unlock and I, you know, I turn it off, all the other doors are closed. So for example, I put, the shopping in the back, no? no, not in the booty, just in the back. I turn the, the car off, I go to open the back, the back is closed. But what the heck is going on with this locking mechanism? So I have to open the, the front door again, I have to unlock with the button, this, and then I can open. But every time, I even looked in the setup, maybe there's something that I'm doing wrong. That never used to happen, no? It never used to happen, exactly. It's just lately. I even, rep I even put all the settings to, uh, to the original settings, reset all the defaults. Uh, that never used to happen, but now there's this weird closing mechanism. I don't know what I've done, but yeah. Every time just this door is open, or maybe that, I don't know. But the back doors are always closed. That must maybe. be something we've done wrong then. 
I don't know, but the settings I've resetted them. Is there a physical button that we're press, pressing? I don't know. There is a setting that says, uh, I don't know, on P, when you press P. So I wonder if you have to press P before turning it off anyway. So that's something that I haven't understood. Okay. And that's the second issue. But the main issue with this car has been the radio. The damn radio is awful. It's this DAB FM. DAB. DAB yeah. FM always cuts off, cuts off, cuts off. I'm listening to Hat, cuts off. I'm listening to Kiss Story, cuts off. I'm listening to Gold, it cuts off. Especially for it coincides sometimes when the ads come on or when he starts talking after um, uh, after a song but it always cuts off and what I have to do is press forward to go to the next station press back and then it works again so there's something wrong with the radio the radio system it's really really bad yeah um, it is yeah but you don't know you don't listen to radio I do I listen to sex music Six huh? Radio Six music. Radio, uh -huh. you know, That's BBC why sometimes uh, when I turn it on, there's this awful music going it's on. Awful. It's brilliant. Six music is brilliant. Um, so uh, yeah, so it is there. That is really annoying. And I thought it was just us kind of having problems with it. So I never really mentioned it in a video ah, before. Okay, there's someone else. But someone else on the Facebook group on ah. the on the e Nero UK interest group on Facebook. Um, they, yeah, someone else mentioned it the other day and I was thinking, God, it isn't just us then, so I should have mentioned it before. Because I, I just thought it was, you know, something we just have to put up with on this model. Um, but it seems to still affect them. And we've got the first edition and they've got the new one, I think, so it's, it's still a yeah, problem. Yeah, it's awful, really. But maybe people don't notice it because they just listen to iPod, iPhone. Maybe, yeah, maybe. iPod, I mean, does it even exist? The iPod, iPod I think maybe, yeah. So yes, but uh, everything and else. The other what? thing is that when you turn off the car and you go back to it, the radio sta radio station is then changed to some weird one that we've never listened to before. Ah, that's happened. That happened. There we go. It's gone. That that happens sometimes. Can you take a picture of that icon so you show people what happens? The thing just goes. Even though we're in the center of Canterbury, we're in the center of Canterbury. The little bar just appeared. Now we had it on silent, so you can't uh, li you can't hear it. But yeah, this yeah. bar appears and it never goes. But look, if I go forward and then I go back, it's fine. Yeah. Ready? Awful machine. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weird, isn't it? So those are the main weird ones. So that's all you've got, is it? That annoys you? Yes. Because in terms of the spaciousness of the car and no, the way yeah, it drives perfect, and all that is good. The size of it. Yeah, no, it's perfect, yeah. Size. You wouldn't inside. want anything bigger, necessarily? A bigger is always better. Well, not when you're parking in, <laughs> not when you're parking in uh, the city, no? Because it's quite easy to park, that's the thing with this. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, yeah, so for me, I've got, I've got things like the charging flap still sticks. I mean, really, Kia could have sorted that and they didn't at the service, but and in winter it sticks. Um, uh, so that's kind of annoying. The reverse, the reversing camera and light are terrible quality. So at night, we don't do much night driving really. But at night, you, if you go into reverse, you can't see anything on that reversing camera. It's useless. And it also gets really dirty as well. So if you're driving uh, in winter, that reversing um, camera gets all kind of messy and but fogged But isn't up. that a normal, scusa? I don't know. It, I think it's particularly bad in the Nero, the, the positioning of that camera. Uh. It kind of sticks out. A little bit, um, yeah. but there is something called cam wipe you can attach to it, and then that will wipe it when your windscreen wiper at the back is going. Um, which seems like a good idea. I think a lot of people have that. That's good, but you shouldn't have to have something like that. Of course. Um, uh, so that's annoying. You don't need the back camera anyway. People used to drive for a hundred years without the camera. So if it's not available at night or when it's snowy, eh, who cares? Yeah, but people a hundred years ago had crap cars they didn't care if they reversed into a bollard or something but uh, now cars cost a fortune um, 
I'm sure they costed a fortune even when the first car was invented. Okay, that Benny, okay. Only posh people could that have Benny. it. Okay, yes, allora. but, but still, it's better to have a working reversing camera yes. when it's a car no, that I'm, costs. I'm, it's a car that costs thirty what thirty five thousand pounds. Yeah, okay, but let's it not should... be sissies. All oh yeah, I need a reversing camera. Okay. If it's not available once okay. in a hundred times, who cares? The 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 blower that comes out of the back is substandard. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's useless. Yeah, that's in true. fact, it's like. Either, yeah. either whether you want it hot or cold, you'd be sat in the back saying, is it doing it? Is it doing it? Yeah, just you know? before I was just, you know, is it coming yeah. out? Is it coming out? Yeah. Useless. Really is probably useless, that. Um, it's quite loud, the, the car, the cabin is quite loud. It's not very well insulated for sound. Um, again, in an expensive car, you would kind of expect it to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. On the, you, hear, you hear a lot you're of road not, noise. And... You'll notice it more when you're sitting at the back and when you're on a highway. Yeah. So on the motorway. Yeah, if you have if you have a more premium car, of course, then you don't get that. But this is premium anyway because it costs a fortune. So again, that yeah. would be nice. Um, but uh, what else is there? The 12 volt battery, of course, I had issues with that. It doesn't manage it properly. But um, now they've replaced the battery. It's absolutely fine. But still a I good care. car. It's, it's a fantastic car. Eh, but you're saying all these bad things. No, but the God, 12 volt. You could you could eh. uh, you could get any car and rip it apart with lots of issues. I mean, people that drive Teslas complain that, you know, it's got panel gaps here and there and it, these things aren't working, the paint's coming off, all this sort of stuff. But other than that, it's a fantastic car. The interior on this one is a little bit ugly, I think. And I don't actually like the look of the car particularly, but, um, you know, the new interior is better because we've got I the first loved, edition. I love the look of the car. Just yesterday, you were showing me the video of um, the Model 3. Model 3 against this, and I still prefer the look of this outside, the back and forth. So you think the Enero is a better looking car? Yes, definitely. Really? Yes. Me too. You too, precious. Yeah. It just looks like it's trying to be cool, but it doesn't manage. Inside, I don't know, I don't care. But inside is spacious, it's high. It's it's perfect, uh, really, for everything. Whether you're in the city, whether you're traveling far, because it has 300, uh, how many miles? 300 miles on highway. So it's perfect, really, if you look at it. Uh, now that we got the, that other car for one month, that is uh, it's so ugly from the outside. Yeah, we've got a DS3 Crossback e tent uh, yeah. for a month. They but brought it in yesterday and it looked, good lord. Yeah, uh, you, have, you haven't even seen inside yet, really. But inside I don't care too much, oh but uh, really the outside, uh, what's going on with that? I don't mind it actually from the outside, but um, yeah, this is a brilliant car. So it's the, the number one, so I've been very negative about it, but the number one thing with this car is that it's so efficient. So at the moment, at the moment we're on four miles per kilowatt hour and actually it's gone down just because we're sat in the car waiting at the vet at the moment. Um, but when we got here, um, it was five point something. I mean, the weather's quite good, but that's with the heater kind of going a bit. But that's like crazy efficiency. It's so good. So it just means that you get more miles for the battery size. And um, it's an amazing car for efficiency. Even if you drive it a bit of a bit heavy footed, it's still very good. So that's like one of the best things about it. The battery is massive. It's good value considering the size of the battery. Um, and yeah, and we'll see what it, we'll see what it's like with this other car that we've got for a month. But I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as good as this. Not much is really. Kia, bye bye Kia. You've been loved. I oh, know. I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss Kia. Yes. So, so our next car is going to be the Fiat 500e. Apart from this one, we're renting for the for the month. Fiat 500e, and then we'll see after that what happens. But um, yeah. How much range does the 500 ever? 199. This oh. has 282. Oh. Officially 282. That's 199. Oh, okay. But it's a small car. So um, yeah, yeah, we're going to miss it. Yes. It's not going to be the same without Kia. Yes. I do. I also don't feel like we've had it long enough because of because of lockdown. We haven't really. We didn't have much of an adventure with it. Uh, did we? We went to Italy. No, I know, but I know, but that was what the first. That was the adventure. That was the first year. I went to John O'Groats 
Then you went to well. John O'Groats. I mean, How get... many cars go to Italy and to John O'Groats? I know, but they I... didn't have adventure. No, but I wanted I wanted a bit more adventure with it. You know, this year I would have liked to have done more with it. Had more little family adventures. So it was a bit sad, I think. But anyway, wonderful car, and I think that's it. I don't think there's anything more to say about it. Aurelia, vuoi di qualcosa? No. Okay. No. But Aurelia misses it as well. She she said the other day to me. This is the point where I'm going to splice in the footage where Aurelia said she's going to miss the Ina. Well, you took a video. Yeah, when we were washing the car. <laughs> Mamma mia. Are you sad, Piccolo, that next week we won't have Kia anymore? Oh, yeah. yeah. The next seven days? Yeah. That's seven days? So in five days, in fact. We're going back on Saturday, we're taking it back. Are you sad? No more Kia? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah? Can you clean? Can I clean? Yes, I can. <laughs> With the leasing process, this was on a two-year lease with Kia, direct from Kia, and uh, it was through the business, so it was all tax deductible, all the rest of it, and um, yeah, and I just have to hand it back, and then they collect it, and then I don't know what happens next. But it was seven, it was uh, sixteen thousand miles was our limit because it was eight thousand a year, and we're on five thousand four hundred ninety-five, so we're below the. So they're going to give us money back? Huh? No, of course they're not going to give us money back, but. Um, but at least they won't charge us any extra because we would have been charged extra had we gone over that mileage. So even uh, if we have all the scratches, they're not going to make us pay more because Doesn't we've done so little well, I, mileage. I, uh, yeah, I don't know actually. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Mm. I mean, uh, condition-wise, it's about you know it's fine. It's to be expected after two years. It's got scratches, you know, very small scratches really on the side. The one thing is that the alloy wheel is uh, as a big okay, what dent do on it. People care? No, no, because because they'll be interested to know whether we get charged for it. But yeah, the uh, alloy wheel has a has a, a dent in the in the alloy, which is really annoying. And it only happened the other day, I think. And just a few days ago. So that's that's really annoying because it was perfect until then. Um, but other than that, yeah. So we'll see what the process is like giving back the lease because this will be the first leased car we've had. Um, but yeah. I think that's probably enough for now. I think otherwise it just gets boring, doesn't it, for everyone. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you've got any questions about the Nero, let me know. And I wonder whether we'll get one again in the future. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now. Bye. Oh, and subscribe and all that sort of stuff.